Join the Badass Babes Club and learn how to code. Hello there, and welcome back to my channel. If you don't already know, my name is Marin, and here on this channel we do all kinds of things. Science, lifestyle, travel, learning, health and fitness, art, music. It's a very interesting place. You should subscribe if you haven't already. So recently, I took a web design course as part of my master's program, and let me tell you, it was awesome. As part of this course, I got to make my own interactive science communication website from scratch using beginner to intermediate HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It was really inspiring and really fun for me, especially because I always thought that this is something that I might not actually be very good at, but as it turns out, I really love it and it was really fun. And it made me really want to make this video for you guys, a little intro to coding and five awesome things that you can make with code. So number one, in line with what I'm currently most familiar with, is that code is great for making websites. HTML tells your site what your content is, like what words go on your page and in what kind of organization. CSS makes it look all cool and shiny and pretty. And JavaScript can fit in there and work with those other two if you want to make cool things happen, like animations and movement. You can also use these skills to customize a web page that you already have set up through another site, like your Tumblr account or your WordPress blog. But Let's back up a teeny bit. All these words that I'm throwing around, like HTML, Java, CSS, these are called programming languages. A programming language, or a coding language, is what a human types into a software program to tell the computer what you want the computer to do. You see, machines only speak machine language, which is based in binary code. So programming languages let us communicate with our machines. What we type into our computer in the programming language that we've created and that we understand gets translated by something inside your computer called the compiler into the machine language that your computer understands so it can execute your commands. Are you with me so far? Because people come up with these programming languages, each language is good for a different thing. For example, a language called Fortran is really good for doing lots of fancy things to lots and lots of numbers, but you can't really build a website in it. HTML is used to do a lot of web design, but it would be pretty useless for designing like a large scale simulation of a real world event, like a weather model. So different languages are used for different things. Which brings me to number two. Code is really great for doing math. Now believe you me, math is not my favorite thing in the world, and it's always been really hard for me. So I was super excited when I figured out that you could use coding to do the math for you. My friend recently came across a complicated homework problem that required us to prove that one side of an equation was always equal to the other side. To do this, we needed to go through all of the different variations of the equation in which it could possibly be solved. And because of the variables involved, this ended up being about 87 different permutations of the same equation. You could do that by hand. That's an option, but not a very fun one. Instead, you could use a tiny amount of the time that it would take to do it out by hand on paper to write a relatively simple computer program that will run through all of the different variations of each side of the equation and tell you that in each case, both sides are equal. Once we'd written it, it took about 30 seconds to run the computer program and have it tell us the answer, which was that yes, in each case, both sides are equal. Math homework is so weird sometimes. And we got to do some pretty cool coding in the process. And it also helps you understand the way the math actually works in a more complete way, because you have to tell the computer what each variable is and how they work together in order for the computer to be able to do the math. So you have to understand it too. It's not like you're just getting the computer to do your homework. Although the point is to get it to do a lot of the work for you, which is... The third super cool thing you can do with coding is build models. This is something that I've never personally done before, but lots of different coding languages can be used to do lots of different things in this area, from building models of sea level rise to creating 3D characters for an animated film. So this use of coding is really wide and really versatile and really exciting, spanning from environmental research to art to politics and beyond. Coming up in spot number four is making an app. You would think that this would be quite similar to a web page, but it's actually really different. Mobile devices behave quite differently from your desktop or a laptop computer because they're connected to your cell surface as well as your Wi-Fi. They have really different processors and very different displays. Apps can include anything from a game like Words with Friends to a health and fitness tracker to a banking app. And each of these is really different from something you would use on your computer. So it presents a really exciting challenge both coding and design wise. And last, but certainly not least, in fifth place, is making something physical happen 
with your computer. You can do this through something called an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, which always sounds so delicious and makes me so hungry, but is not an actual pie, it's a tiny computer chip. You type some stuff into the chip's corresponding software, which usually comes with it as a download if you buy everything in a kit. And when you hook the chip up to your computer and then to some lights or some gears or whatever you want, you can make it do some really cool stuff. Like for example, if you plugged in a whole bunch of different LED lights and then programmed your Arduino to make it flash in a pattern and spell out something like, I love cheese on an infinite loop, which is something that I've definitely never done because I'm a mature adult human being. Or you could make it do something much more practical, like hook it up to a water pump and a solar powered battery and have it water your garden at a certain time every day, like my friend did, who clearly has much more practical vision than I do. Anyway, that is just the start of the amazing stuff that you can do with coding. There's a whole world out there right at your fingertips, and it's like magic. You type in encoded secret language and then a machine magically knows how to present or do or calculate or whatever. It's incredible. And I promise it's actually really, really fun and accessible and easy to get started, even if it seems really intimidating. Find some time and a safe space where you feel comfortable to experiment. And then if you get stuck, just ask the internet. Someone always has the answer out there and usually an accompanying very in-depth tutorial. This video right here by Sabrina about Girls Who Code is up on Snarled's channel and it's about why it's so important for more of us ladies to get into coding. I put lots of resources down in the description about ways that you can get started, even if you have zero experience, because I didn't have any when I started, and I made a cool thing. If I can do it, you definitely can. Thanks so much for watching, please subscribe, and stay tuned for a new video out next Friday. Let me know what you think in the comments, I hope this video was helpful. Okay, bye.